Hello and welcome to the VEASAN Everything Guide to Sports Betting. I'm your host, Josh Applebaum, a sports betting reporter at VEASAN and author of the book, The Everything Guide to Sports Betting. television shows, and popular culture at large, gamblers are often thought of as millionaire rock stars living lavish lifestyles. They are usually depicted as bold and attractive celebrities frequenting the most glamorous bars, restaurants, and nightclubs. They walk around casinos as if they own the place. They drive fancy cars, wear expensive clothes, and sparkling jewelry. They have deep pockets filled with thick wads of $100 bills. These high rollers are confident, bold, and always smiling, always winning, and always making betting look easy. They are the epitome of cool. They are who we strive to be as bettors. The classic example is James Bond sitting at the poker table sipping a martini, enjoying a cigar, and winning hand after hand. While some bettors like this do exist, they are in the vast, vast minority. If you think gambling is easy and you're going to strike it rich and become a millionaire overnight, you are sadly mistaken. You are only setting yourself up for disappointment. The key is to enter sports betting with realistic expectations. Before placing your first wager, new bettors need to abandon their preconceived notions and know exactly what they are getting into. There is no way to sugarcoat it. Sports betting is hard. If it were easy, average Joes would all quit their day jobs and become full-time bettors. Plus, if it were easy, Vegas would go bankrupt. We all know this isn't the case. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Who do you think paid for those luxury towers and sparkling fountains in the middle of the desert? The betters. That's who. However, just because sports betting is hard doesn't mean that it's impossible. You can succeed long term by remaining disciplined, doing your homework, and making sound analytical decisions with your head, not your heart. With that being said, you still need to approach betting with clear eyes and a realistic understanding of how the game is played and what it takes to succeed. One of the main reasons why gambling is hard is because, at its very core, it involves a great deal of luck and randomness. If you're playing poker at a casino, your chances of winning are highly influenced by the cards the dealer hands out. This is considered the luck of the draw. You might get a great hand, you might get a lousy hand. Sure, skill plays a role, but you're also at the mercy of luck. If you're playing roulette, you can choose between red, black, odd, even, and several other options but the outcome is determined not by skill, but by how the ball rolls along the wheel. Where it lands is anyone's guess. Sometimes the luck breaks your way, sometimes it doesn't. Luck is amplified even further when it comes to betting on sports. This is because, unlike a deck of cards at a poker table, or a ball on a roulette wheel, sports betting involves a human element, and we all know that humans make mistakes. If you're betting on an individual sport such as tennis or golf, You are counting on one person to play better than their opponent or opponents. But when you're betting on team sports like football, basketball, baseball, and hockey, you're relying on multiple players, 5, 10, 20, or more, to work together efficiently and effectively toward victory. You're crossing your fingers that they all play well that day and their opponent does not. You're also relying on the head coach and their staff to devise a smart game plan, call the right plays, and make the correct in-game adjustments on the fly. But what if a specific player misses a call or forgets their assignment? What if they had a bad day and throw four interceptions or strike out four times? What if they are distracted by something in their personal life which negatively affects their performance? What if they stayed up late the night before and didn't sleep well? What if they are playing with an illness or an injury? Even if a player is 100% healthy and laser focused, they can still make physical and mental errors. There are countless other variables at play that can make or break a bet. A baseball can stray foul by a quarter of an inch instead of being a home run. The wind can push a field goal kick wide left that would have otherwise been good. A basketball can take a fluky bounce off a rim in an unexpected direction, leading to a put-back dunk instead of a defensive rebound. A hockey puck can ricochet off multiple players and find its way into the net, a phenomenon known as puck luck. Beyond the players, coaches, and whether or not the ball bounces your way, another variable is the referees. They are human as well. By and large, officials get it right the majority of the time. 
but they can also make errors in judgment that impact the game one way or another. Hello and welcome to the VEASAN Everything Guide to Sports Betting. I'm your host, Josh Applebaum. They can miss a blatant offsides or holding penalty, but then call a soft penalty that isn't warranted. They can call a phantom foul that sends a player to the free throw line, or not, co- or not call a foul at all. Even with instant replay, there are times a play will be reviewed in the booth and still be called wrong. Incorrect calls can blow games for one team and win it for the other. For these reasons and many more, there's no such thing as a guarantee or a lock when betting on sports. Anything can happen. This can be a gift and a curse for bettors. It is one of the main reasons why betting is so exciting, but also why it can be so frustrating. You can do zero research on a game, flip a coin, and blindly bet one side, and you might win. Or on the flip side, you could spend all day analyzing a matchup, studying every possible angle, dissecting every stat, and make a perfect and smart bet, and it might lose. No one has a crystal ball. Luck, randomness, and unpredictability is why it's called gambling. In the end, you're taking a gamble on an unknown outcome. One of the oldest and most famous gambling resorts in history is Monte Carlo. Located in the small county, the small country of Monaco along the French Riviera, Monte Carlo features the world-famous Casino de Monte Carlo, built in 1863. The casino is featured in the James Bond film Goldeneye and Alfred Hitchcock's To Catch a Thief. A famous computer algorithm betting system was named after Monte Carlo, which uses luck and and randomness to generate probability distributions. The system will plug in loads of data on both teams and then run hundreds or thousands of head-to-head simulations to determine who is expected to win the game and by how much. Before and during every bet, bettors pray that luck is on their side. This is why bettors are some of the most superstitious people in the world. If they think something can bring them good luck and increase their chances of winning, they'll do it no matter how off the wall or crazy it may seem. If they think something will jinx their bet and cause them to lose, they will avoid it like the plague. Every better has their own unique set of rituals and good luck charms. For one better, this might mean wearing the same lucky hat, lucky shirt, or lucky jersey when their team is playing. Or maybe another better is watching the game at home, and the team he bet on just scored a touchdown while he's sitting on the left side of the couch. From that point forward, the better will not move from the left side of the couch as long as, long as the team keeps winning. Or maybe a better won a big bet after eating a turkey sandwich. So, of course, they'll continue to eat turkey sandwiches for every game until they lose. Once they lose, they will abandon the routine and try something new. In Silver Linings Playbook, Robert De Niro's character is a diehard Philadelphia Eagles fan and big sports better. Anytime he has a big bet on the Eagles, he must sit in his favorite chair, line up the remote in a specific facing direction while gripping his beloved Eagles handkerchief. He also requires his son, played by Bradley Cooper, to be in the room at all times during the game. If any of these factors are thrown off, it messes up the Eagles' juju and causes them to lose, or so De Niro thinks. The whole idea is that you as a better can have an influence on the outcome of the game based on your actions. There is no evidence that any of these superstitions work, but nonetheless, almost all betters have them. In betting circles, the worst thing you can be called is a mush. It's a term for someone who creates bad luck for others. This person will be known to jinx bets, and it seems like any time they're around, something bad happens and you lose your bet. They feel like your personal kryptonite. The term mush comes from the 1993 movie A Bronx Tale, where the main character said, Eddie Mush was a degenerate gambler. He was also the biggest loser in the whole world. They called him mush because everything he touched turned to mush. According to a UNLV Center for Gaming Research study, More than $81 billion was bet on sports in Nevada from 1984 to 2018. Of that $81 billion, Nevada won $3.9 billion. Why does Vegas win so much money? Sure, they set very accurate, hard-to-beat lines and of course capitalize on the luck and randomness of betting, but they also hold a built-in advantage over bettors based on the rules of the game and the overlooked fine print. This advantage is popularly referred to as the house edge. It is a mathematical equation that calculates the average profit the house stands to make on every bet over the course of a full season. This is also considered the hold percentage. This is the amount of money the house holds onto after all bets have been settled and paid out. Simply put, the rules of the game make it such that the odds are stacked against bettors without them even knowing it. It's cliche, it's cliche but it's true. 
This is why the house always wins. To illustrate how house edge works, let's take a look at the dimensions and setup of a roulette table. Many people love playing roulette because they think they have a 50-50 chance to win. After all, there are only two possible colors, red or black, right? However, this isn't the case. In America, the roulette wheel has 38 different numbers with 18 red and 18 black. But 18 plus 18 equals 36, not 38. That's not half. What gives? The green zero and green double zero, of course. The two green numbers provide the house edge. Because there are 18 red, 18 black, and 38 numbers overall, it means that you have an 18 out of 38 chance of it landing on red or black, which translates to 47.37%. In other words, you have a less than 50% chance of it landing on red or black. You might win your first roll at the roulette table, or your second roll, or maybe you even win 5 or 10 in a row. But the longer you keep playing, eventually you will lose. It's a mathematical certainty that over the long run, the house will come out on top 52.63% of the time. That 2.63% number is the house edge. It means that for every dollar spent on a roulette spin, the house holds on to 2.63 cents. That may not seem like much, but if you extrapolate that number over millions and billions of spins over the course of a full year, that's how the house cleans up and makes so much money. When it comes to sports betting, the house always wins for a similar reason. If you've watched enough games as a better, it's hard not to think that the odds makers are some kind of mind-reading fortune teller who knows the outcome of every game beforehand. It seems like every time you turn on an NFL game late in the fourth quarter, the score is 17-14, or 20-17, or 27-24. You check the spread on the game, and sure enough, the team that is winning was favored by three points. The common response among betters is, Vegas knew. However, one of the main reasons why sports books have an edge over betters isn't that they can predict the future, set hard lines, and beat and capitalize on luck and randomness. Sure, that plays to their benefit, but unlike roulette, there is no green zero or green double zero to ensure they come out on top in sports betting. After all, when it comes to betting on sports, you theoretically always have a 50-50 chance to win your bet. If you're betting on the money line, one team has to win and one team has to lose. If you're betting on the spread, one of the two teams has to cover. And if the game ends in a tie or a push, you get your money back. So where exactly is the house edge? The main reason the house always wins in sports betting is because they are able to charge an additional 10% tax on all bets. This is known as the juice. Standard juice is minus 110, meaning you have to pay the house an extra 10 cents on every dollar you, you bet. However, this juice could be even higher, up to 20 cents or more which will be known as minus 120. To really put this in perspective, let's say you place two NFL spread bets. One is on the Miami Dolphins plus three, and the second is on the Dallas Cowboys minus six. In both instances, you are paying minus 110 juice on both bets. Let's say you split the games and go one and one with your two bets. One win, one loss. Maybe the Dolphins covered, but Dallas failed to cover and lost straight up. If you go one and one, that means you broke even, right? Wrong. Because you had to pay minus 110 juice on both bets, this means you had to risk $110 in order to win 100. So in total, with the two bets, you risked $220 overall. You won 100 on your Dolphins bet, plus you got the 110 that you risked back, but you lost the 110 that you risked on your Cowboys bet. So overall, you risked $220 and ended up with 210. This means that even though you went 1-1, one and one, you actually lost $10 despite splitting your, pl your plays. Whether it's roulette or betting on sports, the goal of the house is to keep bettors betting. They might win their first bet or go on an epic hot streak or win 10 in a row. But the longer they keep playing, the greater likelihood they start to lose. This is why casinos give out free drinks and comp rooms. They want you to stick around and keep betting because whether it is the double zero or zero in roulette or the juice in sports betting, the law of averages is always in favor of the house. In addition to luck, randomness, and house edge, bettors must also realize that gambling is, at its core, an emotional endeavor. There's no way around it. Sports betting is an emotional roller coaster that will take you on the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. It can be fun, thrilling, exciting, and exhilarating. 
It can also be frustrating, disappointing, miserable, and torturous. There will be instances when you bet on a game and there is zero sweat involved. This means that from the beginning of the game, the team you bet on jumps out to a big lead, never looks back, and cruises easily to victory, giving you a win. Or maybe you bet an over in a basketball game, and both teams make nearly every shot they take up and down the court, easily cashing your over. There are other times when you bet on a team and it's an epic back-and-forth battle. Your team gets down, claws their way back, both teams exchange leads, and the outcome hangs in the balance. This is called really sweating. You are walking a tightrope the entire time. In the end, your team makes one more play than the opponent and you win a hard-fought victory as your bet cashes. These are some of the most rewarding wins for bettors when you really had to work for it, when it's not easy and there's adversity involved, but you find a way to come out on top. Then there are times when the team you bet on plays awful early on and gets down big. You are so frustrated and disappointed that you turn off the TV. You throw in the towel and consider it a lost bet. But then the team you bet on mounts a furious comeback and they cash for you in epic fashion in the final moments. Maybe you bet the Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus 7 against the New Orleans Saints. Tampa is losing 20 to nothing late in the fourth quarter. But then the Bucs storm back to score a touchdown, recover an onside kick, and then score another touchdown with no time remaining to lose 20 to 14, which means you covered your plus 7 and won your bet. These situations are relatively rare, but do happen from time to time. They are called a backdoor cover. When the team you bet on is down much of the game, but ends up covering the spread at the very end in improbable fashion. You'll often hear better say the back door is wide open when a team starts to inch their way back after trailing most of the game and then end up covering. In Super Bowl 51, the New England Patriots were three-point favorites against the Atlanta Falcons. The Patriots trailed the Falcons 28-3 late in the third quarter, but then roared back to score 31 unanswered points, winning in overtime 34-28. Miraculously, New England ended up covering the three-point spread, despite being down 28-3. But then, just as there are thrilling wins, there are times when the absolute opposite happens. From the very beginning, the team you bet on gets blown out of the water. You have no shot. Or Or your team battles but comes up short. Or, worst of all, your team is leading the entire game and blows it at the very end in heartbreaking fashion. Maybe you bet on the New York Mets as plus 150 underdogs and they take a 4-0 lead into the ninth inning. But then their closer gives up 5 runs, and they lose 5-4, and you lose your bet. Or maybe you bet the Kentucky Wildcats, minus 15 in college basketball, and they're up by 17 points with less than 10 seconds left, and the opponent hits a meaningless 3, last second, to close the game at 14 points, and you lose your bet. These are called bad beats. They happen to all bettors. It is one of the most difficult parts of sports betting, but you have to learn how to take them in stride. Smashing your TV out of anger or frustration isn't going to solve anything and change the outcome. Don't dwell on bad beats. Try not to let the extreme ups and downs negatively affect your bet. Take it with a grain of salt, knowing that for every bad beat you suffer, you'll likely be repaid with a backdoor cover in the future. It all evens out in the end. Let tough losses go and never gloat over a lucky win. It's always on to the next. The volatility and inevitability of ups and downs that come with sports betting can be hard to manage. Betters need to prepare themselves for the emotional toll that they are about to undertake. Betters must learn how to manage their emotions without letting the highs and lows cloud their vision and cause them to make unsound decisions. The truth is that no bet is ever safe. You could be up big and lose. You could be down big and win. There are no guarantees. Sometimes the luck breaks your way and sometimes it doesn't. What you think might be impossible often ends up happening. If you've hung around with enough bettors, you'll notice a common phrase is, I've seen it all. It's easier said than done, but bettors must prepare themselves for the Jekyll and Hyde emotional aspect of betting. The most important thing to remember is that you're always playing the long game. Everyone wishes they could become a millionaire overnight, but it just doesn't work that way. Betting isn't flashy. It's a grind. There's luck, randomness, and unpredictability involved. You'll have good days, and you'll have bad days. The key is never letting the ups and downs throw you off course. Always stay even-keeled, and keep a positive but realistic attitude. 
never get too high or too low. When you're hot and winning a bunch of games, you're never as good as you think. When you're cold and feel like you can't buy a win, you're never as bad as you think. You're always somewhere in the middle. You need to be mentally tough, have thick skin, and ride the wave of sports betting. Don't be concerned about what you can't control. Bad beats happen. Losses happen. So do epic backdoor covers and exhilarating wins. Never let the previous bet, good or bad, influence your next bet. Always approach the next bet with an open and clear mind. Think of Bill Belichick on the sidelines of a game. His demeanor is always the same. Looking at his facial expressions, you would have no idea if his team is up by 20 points, down by 20 points, or tied. Based on his body language, you would have no idea if his team just scored a touchdown or just gave up a touchdown. This is the kind of even-keeled nature that betters must adopt. Focus on what you can control and block out the rest. Finally, in addition to managing your emotions and keeping them in check, knowing that luck and unpredictability unpredictability and randomness is part of the game bettors must also abandon the notion that they'll win 90 percent or 80 percent or 70 percent of their bets to be considered a sharp better you need to win between 55 and 60 percent of your bets the sharpest handicappers in the world don't go much higher than 60 percent this may not seem impressive but remember the magic number is 52.38 percent That's the percentage of bets you need to win to overcome standard minus 110 juice and break even. Strive for 53%. Anything above that means you're a winning better and turning a profit.